Tana, you know I love Paisanos, but man, I spent a whole lot of money there this weekend. They didn't give you a card yet? A card? Oh, my bad. I might have to let the rabbit out the hat a little bit. Hey, my man, Iman, give my dog a card or something. A card? Like yeah. an unlimited, like a black card, a Paisano's black card? Yeah, I was hoping that, you know, you get you a card, too, since you're the co-host of my show and everything, so. It was delicious, though. Yeah, that's for sure. Y'all better get some. I need that card. I'll have me Paisano. Coming up on the Santana Moss Show podcast, it's Gemini season. Say it isn't so. My man Trent Williams want out of the Washington Redskins. Say it ain't so. HBO may want in to the Redskins locker room. And there has been a sighting from Mike Tyson punch out. King Hippo is the new heavyweight champion of the world. Can you believe that? King Hippo. King Hippo. Ooh, 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 ooh. The Santana Moss Show podcast starts right now. It's the Santana Moss Show. Former through the ball game. Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. Hot mic on the left. Every single week is a lyrical fact. Santana Moss Show podcast. First of all, I'd like to make a toast to all the Geminis out there. I am not one. However, I do respect y'all's hustle. Toast to all the Geminis. Yes, indeed. It is Gemini season. Gemini, this is the Gemini. Santana Moss Show podcast with the Gemini twin himself. Yeah, that's me. Twinny twin twin. Mm-hmm. Santana Moss. Mm-hmm. How you doing, papi? What's up, my brethren? First of all, happy belated. I'm back. I just want the world to know, um, you can follow me on Travis Thomas Experience on all social medias. I let the world know, and I confess my love to Santana Moss, I did a birthday appreciation post at midnight. Guess what? And for I, my dog. I appreciate that. And we were just we just talked, you know, Oscar <laughs> said he was ready to text me, and mid-text he raced like 10 times because he didn't know that if that was, man... You know, it, you know, I have a friend that do these man laws. He didn't yeah. know if that fit in the man law. He didn't where, think it did. Where he can text somebody, uh, another guy, and say happy birthday. But guess what, Oscar? We give we give passes for that, man. That's one of those passes that we would give you because that's not one of those man codes, man. Well, so, I don't give a damn. This I is romance, and if somebody got a problem with it, you can't beat me. I love my dog. That's all there is to it. I love my dogs. Nah, man, I appreciate it, though. When I saw the text, um, I was... Somewhere partying, man. And oh, I, I know. And I, I tried to make sure I showed you that, you know, that I appreciated. Yeah. it. You didn't quick. have any misspellings or yeah, anything man. like that. So I know. <laughs> Especially, you know, when I'm kind of tipsy, man, everything is sharp. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I found out that uh, after a couple of, you know, shots to the head, yeah. things are very clear. Yes. You know? I was able to play very good in, in my day mm-hmm. on some of those shots to the head. But, just um, take the edge off. Yeah, man, you know, help the help the vision a little bit. Well, you were in uh, in Miami in yeah. the MIA for your 40th. Happy 40th. Lord knows I wanted to be down there with you, but I got these damn babies at the house. Man. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. You didn't miss nothing. You just missed everything. <laughs> well, break it down for me, man. We had a good what? time. We had what a good time. We had there, a good man. time. Uh, I, I went home. You know, every year it's a, uh, uh, I bring it in the right way. I've been doing these little birthday weekends. As long as I can remember back Forever. when I was a Jet, you know, yeah. probably way before then. But every year it just gets better. And um I've been doing it away from Miami the last five or six years. I've been doing it here in yeah. D.C. I was at D.C. Last so, year. so much love. It's hard not to do it here, mm-hmm. you know. And um I thought about it. So I'm turning 40. What better way to celebrate this birthday than do it with my family? No doubt. And so um, what I did, I told my friends, this is what I want. This is how I want to do it. I'm going to take care of things that they can't handle, and y'all just get it together, you know? And yeah. so we did that. Um, one of my guys linked up with some producers down there or some, you know, club promoters, and he had the whole schedule map planned out from Friday to Sunday. Mm. Um, my little power circle, one time for the PC, you know, show some love to my power circle. Uh, that's my brothers, my cousins, and friends. Um, they got my barbecue together you know mm-hmm. i basically told him hey i'm gonna get his airbnb mm-hmm. you know I'm, i want a nice barbecue i want to i want to have one of those family type vibes at this barbecue you know we can we can invite the close friends but i want to be you know uh, mostly family right they did all they had to do with that and we just had a good time man honestly it was a great time and 
It's crazy. My voice is slowly coming back. I hear it. At Sunday, by Sunday, it was gone. Damn. It was gone. It, it got better. The more I drunk, it, it came around. And then, you know, it's Monday, it's crazy because Monday I slept so much. And when I got up, I finally, I felt like I had got my second win, like mm-hmm. late Monday, late Monday afternoon. And I'm like, you know, who am I kidding? Like, why would I go work out and do anything that I want to do? Because I want to do so much. Right. I said, let me go rest my behind. Hell man. yeah. So I, I laid back down. And then Tuesday, I was, I was back. We're back. I was back doing me. Well, you've inspired me, man, because look here. I'm going to be 38 this year, which is nothing. However, I've started already thinking about 40 now. And I'm going to plan it because I don't know if y'all know this, but um, <clears throat> Santana and I are in different financial lanes. So with that being said, I'm not saying I'm broke. I'm just saying the way my account is set up, I got a check-ins and a savings, whatever. So the deal <laughs> is I have to start planning now for my 40th to do it about halfway to how my boy did it. Well, you know, planning is always good. I'm not a planner, so it was crazy for me to even start putting that stuff into play because I talked about it, like, weeks before, and I promise you, I was flying home on, what, Friday morning? Yeah. And everything was probably pretty much stamped by Thursday. Wow. That's how late it got, you know. But it was stamped. But it was stamped. You know, once we put the stamp and the approval on and hey, it was going to go down. So, um, and like I said, too, if I didn't have anything planned, we were still going to have a good time because I was going to be home with family. And my son had a track meet Saturday morning. And I remember telling, you know, like, man, I might not make it, you know, because I'm going to be tired from Friday. But I made sure I showed up, you know, because even though I was hungover slightly, but, hey, I'm here. And he it's 4 by one one and then – I looked at the clock, it was like 2 o'clock, and I'm like, oh, the barbecue starts in like an hour, so let me go ahead and, you know, get back that way and get right. things going. So um, everything worked out. It was it was, it was was perfectly timed. Does it feel different being 40? Because, I, I mean, I think about, like, you know, we young black men, bro. Statistically, yeah. we shouldn't even be here, so this is a blessing, right? I, I, I try not to view age, regardless of you're younger or older. I try not to put... Uh, um, you know, a feeling on it. Like you should feel like this right. at this age, or you should look at. Cause honestly, you just asked me that. Like, yeah, when did I feel? You know, things start. You know, being you know slowing down, slowing a little down bit. a little bit on me that weekend. And all the weekends just felt the same. Mm. But what I try to do more than anything is just stay in the gym, stay training, stay working out. Because I, I realized right after my first year. What have kept me up to where I'm at now mm-hmm. is doing what I've been doing for my profession for so long. Why well, stop when it's over? You know, I think I give myself that that chance to be able to do what I'm doing now because I'm still training. I'm still working out. I'm some some days I get two days in. I'm eating better. So, you know, and then I haven't been doing all this partying in a while. Now, right. the Tanner, the young Tanner, I was partying like that before that birthday came. so But you were younger, so it didn't exactly. affect you as, right. Yeah, but so now I do a lot more, you know, traveling back and forth just to see the fam. And, yeah. you know, you know my work schedule is crazy at times, so I'm always on the road driving here, driving there. But besides that, I'm resting. So yeah, it, it was only right for me to let it all hang yeah, out. It's like you know, a, a reward. It's yeah. like a reward. I, You know, I think it's interesting about age, too, is that I feel like people oftentimes say, well, what would current day you say to younger you? I actually like looking at it different because I still remember how 18-year-old Travis thought. And so, because it's not much different now, to be honest with you. But I, I try to think, all right, what would 18-year-old me say about current day me? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So so Tana that played for the Chiefs in high school, yeah. what would he say now about 40-year-old Tana? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes would a lot he have sense. Been, would he be proud – to be where you're at now. Yeah, because when I was young, I said, when I get older, I'm going to be partnering with my kids. <laughs> wow. And I promise you, I had my son and my oldest nephew, you know, right there with me. We was right there. And it was crazy because I, I introduced my ne- my son to one of the um, guys who uh, who ran the club. And he's like, this little 10? And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you say, damn, boy, you old, boy. You know, and I started laughing. I say, nah, because who can show him better than me, you know? And... It, I was, you know how it is. Like you say, you're a proud pop for everything they do, right? I was a proud pop seeing that he can handle his composure in the situation or the environment that we was in throughout those nights. You know, my son, he, you know, he's 19, but you know, you're in college now, and 
Trust me, I remember 19-year-old me in college going to different bars and having, you know, the Rat Scaler on, on the University of Miami or, you know, whatever we had on, down the street in Coconut Grove. Those nights, man, I, I remember college nights and enjoying myself. I didn't have an older brother or somebody to, to yeah. kind of guide me that sure. way. I had an older brother, but I'm saying I didn't have nobody taking me out. Sure. But I was already seasoned. And I say that because the guys I hung with in high school – you know, the guys that we looked up to as brothers, you know, they was in the street doing different things, but mm-hmm. they made sure they showed us that, hey, this is how we make our living. This is how we do things. You guys play ball. I want to see you guys successful someday. We're going to give y'all a taste of how we hang, so right. we're going to bring y'all along to have a good time. Right. But once this good time is over, I want to make sure y'all in school tomorrow and y'all on that football field for practice. And so having those big brothers considered as brothers. Oh, geez. Oh, bingo. Those OGs teaching us the game and showing us how to do it the right way, I was always seasoned to know how to handle myself in those, you know, those environments. So to see my son, he lived in a different world. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to worry about growing up in those neighborhoods that I grew up in. You didn't have to worry about going up to those those schools that I grew up in when guys bringing guns to school and you have metal detectors and cameras all throughout the schools. He didn't have to grow up that way. But to see that he can handle himself and, you know, you know, Actually, you know, um, you know, be able to be, uh, uh, hold his composure in those environments. It was great to, to party with him and say, "Damn, man, you know, you can do this by yourself someday." You know what I'm saying? So I like to be around to see it, so I could be able to tell you right from wrong. Hey, don't do this, don't do that. But you know, all my homeboys are like, "Man, little Tan can hang, man. He, he don't need you here." But I'm like, "No, I'm here though." No, you I'm, here. I'm keeping an eye on right. him because I know he's still young. But so I enjoyed it, like man, to the utmost just to see him and my nephew have a good time. And like I say, I'm one of those guys, even though we celebrate me, I like to see everybody else having a good time. You know? Right. So as long as everybody else having a good time, I know that, you know, everything I'm doing is on the up. Man, that's all right, man. Tanner, grown up, y'all. Let's give it up for Tanner. <laughs> Happy birthday to my dog and all the oh, Geminis man. out there. Now, listen here, Zodiac people. I expect the same love when Libra season comes around. When October comes around and them pumpkin spice lattes Ooh, is flowing wee. and them damn Ugg boots is working, I want the same love during Libra season. But for now, it's y'all's time, Geminis. Happy birthday <laughs> to y'all. Alright, so Tanner, I don't know if this brother is a Gemini or not, but he is showing me two sides and I don't like it. Trent Williams mm. ain't showed up to a damn thing. I mean, he, he just has not stepped foot in Redskins Park since the season has been over, quite frankly. Yeah. Now, at first, it was about money, and he wanted a new deal, and we see holdouts all the time. Yeah. No big deal, right? Now, the first place I saw it was Jason Lock and Fora uh, with CBS reported that it's not about money, it's about medical, and he's upset with the Redskins medical staff, and there were some issues there. <laughs> What is going on, Tana? This is drama. Right when I thought the Redskins didn't have any drama, here we go. Yeah, that's the to me. That's to me. That's been the biggest um, disappointment about the whole situation to me. Because just when you thought that the Redskins was on the up and up, from all the you know the new guys coming in out of the draft, and you know um, we landed some guys on the O line that can contribute to what we had last year. And in Collins. Now your biggest staple, the guy that holds it down on the backside, is saying that I'm out. You know, uh, there's been rumors that he's saying that, you know, you guys got it wrong. Whatever you heard about the money situation ain't about the money. And I'm sure that's not about the money because from day one he's been paid as one of the highest, you know, offensive linemen from day one when he came and got drafted by the Red, Washington Redskins. And now – you know, you've been hearing rumors of that. Um, he's really disgusted and disappointed with how they handle his medical uh, situation. So, I don't. I, I really don't believe that the the outside outsiders us don't know uh, the severity of what's really going on with this matter. I think the best thing that can happen right now for the Washington Redskins is that the man himself, Dan Snyder, gets a hold of Trent and they have a sit down and talk it out. Because, to, you know, Trent is a guy that, with Trent, things might be on the up for these guys for this this season. I don't see them being the Washington Redskins that we all are hoping for without a Trent Williams showing up and, not, and suiting up for these guys this year. I'm one of the, those people that always feel like when someone says it's not about the money, 10 out of 10 times it's about the money. 
if you show them the money, take a line from Jerry Maguire, uh, problems tend to go away. If I'm wrong, and it is medical, yeah, and it is he's disappointed with how the team handled or whatever, Tana, could I not argue? I mean, look, I've known you for a long time. You have said to your blue in the face, you got to have your own doctors. You got to get second, third, fourth, fifth opinion sometimes. You got to have your own trainers. If the team tells you, you know, your hamstring is jacked up, go to your own guy who stretches you and knows your body. He'll tell you, no, you need to strengthen your core or whatever. I'm just making that up, but I'm saying you always say guys need to have their own team of of medical people yeah. and trainers. Can I argue – what is Trent doing putting all his eggs in the Redskins basket to begin with? Well, you know, some of the guys are fortunate enough to not have to have as many hiccups in their step when it comes to doing what they do. You know, what do you mean by that? And I'm going to tell you that I had a good friend, college teammate and played pro the same amount of years I did, Reggie Wayne. Okay. Reggie never used anybody outside the building that he played in with the, uh, you know, Indianapolis coach. Reggie Wayne? Never. Had, had no reason to. Always, his body was always intact. The things that he did on his own kept him intact. Then there's guys like myself. It's made different. It's built a little different. You know, uh, I have a, a tendency of, and my brother was, went through this his years with the Giants. And, and you know, it's a reason why our careers ended up the way they did. My brother played six years and I played four teams because when he blew his gaskets, he didn't know that, hey, man, that's just the way you built. We leave everything on that field. We don't know how to go half speed. At times, we're going to pull something, nick something, do something to what our, our most valuable you know, uh, aspect of our game, and we need to have somebody that's right there that can restore that. And I look at a guy like Trent Williams. You know, what he does, it comes natural. He's one of the most athletic offensive tackles ever to feet. play the game. Quick feet. Quick feet. Big. If you put the ball in this guy's hand, he can actually run between tackles and get you 10 yards. Trent. He grew up playing running back. Ooh, if you I watch the guy on basketball, he's a point guy on the basketball oh. court. No, honestly. So he's a guy that's just, he physically gifted to do what he does. Right. And the little hiccups or the, he have in his his step or whatever in his game, he can he can resurrect that, you know, being in those training rooms, getting a little ice. It's nothing so it's nothing to the point of uh, unless he need a surgery, he never had to worry about somebody really working on him, you know, every day to get him to go play on Sundays. So guys like a uh, Trent Williams, you know, I understand why they don't go out their way to go find these medical guys. Guys like myself, I had to learn the hard way early. But I'm glad it was early. I'm glad I went through what I went through as a rookie for the New York Jets when I hurt my knee and got back, and then I came back and blew my quad, and then I came back and blew hamstrings left and right. I'm glad I went through it. I didn't want to go through it because it made the things that I was able to do, you know, I had to go around some of the some of the moments that I could have had that we could be talking about now on top of the other moments. You said Curtis Martin dropped jewels yeah, on you too. Yeah, those guys was able to give me, like, look here, Tanner, we see the potential in you. You know, we I was laying on the table with Curtis Martin. I remember Curtis Martin had two ankle sprains, mm. and he still rushed for a thousand that year. Mm. And I remember he didn't practice a lick. And he said, "You know, I just come in here and get my treatment, but I have someone at home give me acupuncture. I have a masseuse. I have a chiropractor." Wow. And you know, and it was a year later. T. Buck comes from New England Patriots, and I remember him playing for Florida State. And I, Pharrell you know, Buckley. Yeah, yeah. I remember. And him. I, I, you know, I looked up to him as a kid. And he was like, young fella, you got to pay to play. And that was the first time I heard wow. that, that that's, you know, that word pay to play. And that's when I kind of uh, adopted that and said, you know what? This guy telling me this. Curtis Mont has told me some. Mo Lewis has told me. Yeah. Marvin Jones has told me. Yeah. All these older guys that's going on their 12th year. Some Ballers of these guys, too. And they've been balling for so yes, long. Yes, sir. Have, gave, have given me the recipe to what it takes. Maybe I'm that guy that needs that. And. When you look at the whole situation from me coming from New York to Washington, I didn't want to leave. Whatever happened made me leave, and I got up out of there. It was the best thing for my career. But when I got here, I found that guy. And so I look back on it like everything happened for a reason because I found the guy that pretty much resurrected me and gave me those years that I was able to last as long as I did. And I still had more years in me. You know, I, I left the game with, I, talk, I think, at least three years left in me. So – when I look at a Trent Williams, when I hear him saying, 
Anytime I hear Trent Williams disappointed with something medically, you know, and knowing that he's been a guy since 2013, he, what, missed 13 games, they said. Four of them probably has been from suspension because you know he has some yeah. banned something. This, Cloudy. Uh, you know, yeah, so, but the others has been from injuries. And right. the only time Trent Williams is missing a game is when he can't go. Yeah. It was games last year when the whole offensive line was – you know, torn apart, and right. he was hanging on saying, look, I know all he got is me. Yeah. So when I hear him disappointed with something that happened to him, you know, by the doctors that, really means that we really, you know, give our all to and, and say, hey, at the end of the day, they're like our financial advisors. Right. He feels betrayed. I'm going to give you this money. Ugh. You make sure you do the right thing with it because I'm not, I'm not educated enough to know what, 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 what I should or what I shouldn't do. Now, I'm going to ask you questions, but I'm not – Feel. I'm not, you know, um, I didn't take this up. You're not up. qualified. Bingo. So I put all my marbles in one basket with you. That's the right. same thing we do with our doctors. Look, I don't know nothing about nothing. All I know is this thing hurting, and I think I need you to fix it. I need to get back out. So mm. when mm-hmm. I go to you and you're qualified mm. and you represent the team that I represent, that's that same logo that I have on my helmet, and you mislead me, mm. And later on, I find out something is going on with me that could have been handled differently. Then I understand his drift. I get his drift. And that's why I find it hard to be about money because this is, here's a guy with tons of money. You know, he's never been a part. He's never been complaining about the dollar or what he should or shouldn't shouldn't have. So this is personal. It has to be personal. And that's why I said it, we don't know the severity right now. We on the outside looking in. It's something deeper and bigger than we know. And I hope that the only – I hope for the team's sake and for the season's sake that Dan himself sit down and find out. Because if he don't find out and it, and it prolongs – think about it. The season's around the corner. Training camp's nope. around the corner. Yeah, hell yeah. And you so got a rookie quarterback you just you invested in. If you don't have your number one guy on oh, the offensive line, your God. back end, uh-uh. your blind side, yep. your protector, yep. your seven-time pro bowler, Coming in and he's telling you already he's out because of whatever you did wrong or whatever they did wrong, then you need to sit down. You need to sit him down with the man. And no coaches could come in this meeting. It need to be it's the just owner. Him too. It need to be Dan Snyder and Trent Williams, and they need to talk it out because I feel that if you don't have a Trent Williams, this season just went down the drain just that quick. Okay, let me ask you this: as your partner in crime, you're tied to both of these guys. You know yeah. Dan personally. You know Trent personally. Gut feeling, Santana Moss. How do you think this thing plays out? Because for me, I'm telling you right now, if Trent is done with this franchise, I'm not even playing Dwayne Haskins this year. And I'm, I've am i been on record saying, start him tomorrow. Yeah. If Trent Williams is out, this kid's holding a clipboard this season. Let Case and Colt get, go get their ass beat. <laughs> Honestly, you know, uh, I'm, the, I'm an optimist. So I'm always thinking optimistic about every situation. I hope Dan can be the guy that can find a, a, a resolution and say, hey, we can fix this. Okay. I, I hope so. Because just hearing from what I'm reading and what I've been hearing rumors-wise, this guy is unhappy. And they did something. They dropped the ball some kind of way. I don't know what they but did. But Dan can make it right, you think? I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope for two reasons. One, for Trent and Dan's sake. And the second reason, for the organization's sake. Because if Trent's that disgusted with something that they did to him – it's been a guy, hold on, you got to think about it. They drafted him first round. What, fourth pick? Top pick in the draft, and he's been there ever since. He's been he's been quoted the best offensive lineman, offensive tackle in the league for how many years now? By the same organization. And he found a reason to wake up one morning and say, man, they pissed me off that much to say, I want to be traded or released. Right. Yeah. Something went wrong, man. And I hope for the sake of the organization, for the sake of this season's team, yeah. I mean, this this, this team team's seasons season. this year, I hope we can find a resolution because it, it seems that as, as high as we've been on these draft picks and everything that's coming to us this year, getting the receivers, getting the quarterback, getting that guy off the, uh, you know, the that end we got, that speed safety, end. Safety, landing. Safety, all this, man. Everything could be washed down the drain if you don't have a Trent Williams there to protect your quarterback and to protect oh. those guys in the run game like he has been doing for so long. So um, I'm really banking on Dan sitting down with him, man, and finding a way they can, you know, um, some kind of way they can be in the middle with it. And I think if worst worst case, if Trent just don't suit up again as a Redskin, 
it, we have enough time. We can go out there and get a guy that can be, uh, uh, you know, it ain't of, gonna be Trent of some help. You're right. Yeah, it, it, it might not be, but I, I believe it's a guy that that, that, that can help if Trent just not, you well, know, feeling that he can he can never suit up again. For I'm us. gonna go a step further because we friends and I can do this. I'm telling you right now, if this thing keeps dragging out and it gets uglier and you 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 and I both know the less communication and the more time that kind of goes with pointing fingers, the worse things will get. I want you to jump in because you do know both. Yeah. And if you believe the resolution can be had if they get in a room together, well, damn it, man, maybe you got to pull some strings and make some calls and get them in a room together. No doubt, no doubt. And, you know, one of the things that I've always – and you're – it's not a year that goes by that I don't want to say, you know, pick up the phone and holler at them right. about different things that sure. I see goes on. Because beyond this situation here, there's things in years before that I'm like, man, this needs to be done. And that's one of the reasons why I'm glad that Porter's is, is, is in the building and Cooley is in the building. Because right. we kind of all think alike. Yeah. And I normally, sometimes when stuff going on, I call Porter's like, man, how do you think Dan feel about this Because you situation? know he's got the ear Because I'm too. sure that, you know, Dan leans on Porter's a lot, you know, and Cooley. And when I hear from Porter's, he always – assures me that, yeah, man, this has been spoke about, you know what I mean? So I'm always, uh, you know, um, you know, clear-minded when it comes to saying, okay, at least someone is talking about that matter. Right. But uh, this one here, if I have to, I will reach out to Dan. But I'm hoping because of I know the both relationships of both parties, you know, Dan thinks highly of Trent, Trent thinks highly of Dan. I do believe that, you know, it's going to be a sit down sooner or later because you have to. You have to really find out why is he angry? Why is he so mad? You know, why why is it that he he's not, you know, looking forward to being a Redskin this year? And if all those rumors are true, that, that needs to happen immediately. Trent, we love you, big dog. Get back out there, man. We need you in Burgundy and Gold in the worst way. In the worst way. I ain't lying to you. By the way, Tanner, this is something I've been wanting to ask you for a while. I haven't got to yet. Hard knocks, the rumor's still floating out there that the skins could be on this thing, right? Yeah. Now, here are the five finalists. Lions, Raiders, Giants, Niners, Skins. Now, I thought to myself, you know, if you're an NFL team, why the hell would you want to do hard knocks? Well, because it's mandated. Listen to this. The rules are a team can't be selected if it was in the playoffs either of the last two seasons, if it has a first-year head coach or... Or if it's been on the program at any point in the last decade. So the Redskins are eligible, and the league literally makes these teams go on this show. Tana, if the Redskins are selected for this program, is that a good or a bad thing for the franchise? And if you were still a player, if you were still a player, how would you feel about this? How would that land with you if you were selected? I wouldn't want, okay, first of all, even as a fan, I wouldn't want the Redskins to be be on this show. As a fan, you wouldn't. As a fan, I want. And as a player, I definitely wouldn't want no damn camera following me around. Like, I'm one of those guys, man. I can't. I hate to be followed. I hate cameras. Like, I hate to be videoed and, and feeling like I'm, I got to do something, you know, just because this camera on me right now. I want to be able to do what I do the way I do it. And if the guys in the locker room see it, so be it. That's it. That's all. You you supposed you supposed to see what I do my daily do, how I do my daily do. I can't. Um, I probably won't be able to work that way. You know what I mean? I find it entertaining now when I watch other teams a part of this, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot goes into it, just like our show. They edit things. I mean, me, they'll be editing everything because I curse the entire day throughout <laughs> practice. You know, I can't say a word without cursing and. Half the time is mother this, mother that. You know, I, I get it. I get it from my old, my old man, my pops. That's all he knew. Mother, mother f for this, mother f for that. But and it's funny, they mic me up one time in practice, and it was like, Tan, I didn't know you rap all day and sing to yourself, <laughs> and everything was mother. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, how clearly, I wouldn't want to be a part of the no hard knocks. But when I heard that hard knocks had some teams that they had in mind, I immediately thought, like, damn, why did the Browns? Do theirs last year. This is the Ooh, year I would like to see year. the Browns. Yeah, that would have been crazy. This is the year I'd like to see the Browns. Yeah, be crazy. And besides the Browns, the only other team that I feel like is made for TV, that's made for hard knocks, please, everybody, I hope you're with me, the Raiders. Of course. The Oakland Raiders. One reason is because this team is what? Well, this they on their last year of in being, being mm-hmm. over here in Oakland. Mm-hmm. 
And I don't think they even found a stadium yet. Do they have a stadium yet for this year's I, game? I think they're going to play right in the same thing they've been playing. No, because in. they said that that was the last – last season was the last year in the Coliseum. So they have been petitioning now that's what they said. where they're going to play at this they year. So that's, new place. that's the reason to have them on hard yep. knocks. Another reason is – some of the acquisitions this year. No doubt. First of all, you already have Derek Carr coming back. Right. You know how much room has been going up and down about, you know, um, do Gruden want a Derek Carr in his, right. his offense? Do he favors that Derek Carr, you know, as a quarterback in his offense? A.B. Yep. A.B. Made for TV. All yep. the hoopla coming from Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. coming over. Um, man, they have incognito mm-hmm. on the offensive line. You know what this guy brings. You're crazy as hell. You want to see how he do what he does. Can we trade for him now with all the tramp bullshit? <laughs> I don't think he plays tackle, though. And then you have Josh Jacobs, his story of being homeless right. yeah. and how he's made it to now, you know, to where he's been, you know, trying to get to for so long. Uh, besides that, you have the kid, Jonathan Abram. Yep. He's already predicted to be a starter already. He's already taking starter reps out there, you know, at the safety position. He's weighing Deuce 4. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my dude, you know, who I'm talking about, mm-hmm. who wore that number so well. And besides him, you got Brandon Marshall, you know, one of the most – uh, recognizable linebackers in this league coming over from Denver. They have so many guys that I think that you would love love to see there every day. Uh, I think beyond all those guys, you got A.B. He's a star. Yeah, don't forget the owner with that bowl cut. And then the, the owner too, but I think A.B. is a star. He's a star in his own right because of how he do things, how he prepares, how he eats, how he trains. And I know that would be something that all these kids that's, you know, looking up to him now or yeah. being a receiver, I see a lot of guys that want to be ABs out there. I see the way they train, the way they're going about their game and trying to get to the next level, whether it's college or pros, they're taking a little page out of AB's book and he's taking it from the guys in front of him. But uh he's a guy that doesn't rest. I see this guy, I follow him on Instagram. Um I know him from growing up in Miami. And just to see the way he go about his stuff. You know, he's going to go out there and produce. It's just on what level of it it's going to be, you know. And I'm interested more than anything else going on in this league besides my Redskins. I'm interested. I'm very interested to see how this is going to pan out this year because I, I talk highly, spoke highly of um, uh, Roethlisberger and how he got the ball to A.B. Being right. a receiver, I understand the difference of when it's your time and when it's not. Right. I was very intrigued with how I watched the Pittsburgh Steelers handle things, knowing that they had Antonio Brown as their number one receiver, number one threat. And when it was games that he was blanketed, doubled, they still found a way to get him the ball. Yeah, I was a guy that, first of all, if I had four or five attempts in a game, I'm balling. To see him with 20 attempts, 15 to 20 attempts at times, these guys found every which way they could to find a way to make him a vocal point of – you know, their offense's output. So right. I'm very intrigued with what's going to happen this year when times are tough for that offense. I mean, for that offense to really get him the ball, because it's going to be tough at times. I want to see if they take a, a page out of the Pittsburgh Steelers book and say if Derek Carr is going to be able to be a Roethlisberger. I don't think Derek Carr could prolong plays like Roethlisberger, like Big Ben can. But I do believe that if everything is going his way, on his step, on his third step, fifth step, whatever he's reading, he can get that ball to that guy. It's going to be some, you know, some some, um, some hands thrown up in the air and the band going to be playing. So uh, I think they're made for this hard knocks thing just with what transpired with him coming, coming over from Pittsburgh and what we all as spectators are hoping to see, you know, transpire through the season. Hell, I hope you're right because I – I need HBO to hand the Redskins an L and say, <laughs> we we didn't select you. I'd be cool with that. Turn that L to a dub for the oh, Skins. Oh, man. Because I, I don't need them on there. Now, I'll take I, the I Raiders I wouldn't want to be a part of it now. Yeah. But, like, it's crazy that as much as I wouldn't want to be a part of it as a player, <laughs> there's some players out there that want to be a part of it. Of course. I, one of my guys, Ocho Cinco, I think that was yeah. one of the best hard knocks ever. It's good for business. You know, to watch him and his day when he shows you that he can go to McDonald's and eat McDonald's and go out there and be one of the fine tuned athletes that he was. So it, guys like him it needs that. Business. You know, guys yeah. like him needs that. He became the guy who he became off the field because of hard knocks. Yeah. I believe they no got a question. chance to really tap into Chad's life and Chad's world to see what ticked him, what made yep. him Chad. And if people didn't know Chad outside of football, 
He's a clown every day. Like, you bump into this guy in the street, and he's going to say something to have you in tears, just like he was as a player, the way he talked to Ray Lewis and those guys on Hard Knocks or, you know, some of those clips you saw him telling, I'm coming to crack you, and then you find him on his butt, and he's telling you, man, how hard he got hit. Guys like that are made for TV, so, you know, there's a lot of characters still out there, especially in that Raiders in locker room. Yeah. So I would love to see those guys on Hard Knocks. I would, Knock. too. Anybody but the skins. That's my hashtag. Anybody but the skins. All right, let's go to taking L's. You got to know where I'm going here. I'm giving it to Anthony Joshua. (laughs) Bro, (laughs) shout-outs to Andy Ruiz Jr., the new heavyweight champ. But come on, bro. Oh, my God. Can we just be honest about this? Like, Can you say in 2019, without being a fat shamer, that it looks like this guy drives a truck for little Debbie and sells cupcakes with the glitter on it? Like, can it— Am I allowed to say that? What was that? the guy named on Mike Tyson Punch Out? The fat guy. Because <laughs> I know Hippo. all I know is Glass Jaw Jones. King Hippo, y'all. It was King Hippo. Was it him? I think so. No, it couldn't have been. We need Rob or somebody. We need I somebody to tell Google us. King Hippo. I'm the, pretty sure. Well, it was if, it. if that's him, that's who just <laughs> won. The, that's just right who now. won the heavyweight title this this past weekend. He doesn't get the L, but the guy he knocked out, he definitely gets the L because he just told my guy. <laughs> That he had to come to London to fight him. So right. now I'm sure that you won't be going to London. No one's going to London to see you fight again. You're going to be fighting the States. <laughs> you better hope you even get a shot at the belt again because you just got took down. And to be honest with you, it was King Hippo. It was King Hippo. <laughs> so you was right. <laughs> That's him. That's just who won the belt. Put it up there so everybody can see. Shout outs to King Hippo. <laughs> You Look, beat Anthony Joshua fair and square. More Anthony than, Joshua, you get the L. More than anything, I think the loser of that match tweeted that I just broke the Drake curse. Am I wrong or right? <laughs> I believe I'm right. Drake strikes again. Drake strikes again. Rest my case. Remember in Punch Out with King Hippo, you just hit him in the stomach all the, the bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I remember vividly. <laughs> Trust me. That was my game, man. Glad you got <laughs> For all of our younger viewers, hey, Google is your friend. Yeah. Oh, Mike Tyson's punch out. I think we could end it there. Santana Marshall podcast. <laughs> Shout outs to King Hippo. Happy birthday, bro. <laughs> ah, thank you, my brother. It's a Santana Marshall. Former Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. 